Hi, I'm Tim Rigdon, Director of Silver and Bear II at Heritage Auction Galleries in Dallas, Texas. I want to welcome you to the video previews of our November 8th Fine Silver and Bear II auction. We also will be holding previews of this auction from October 13th through 15th in New York City at the Fletcher Sinclair Mansion and in our new Beverly Hills offices from October 21st through 26th. In the past several seasons, we have been offering fine jewelry and hollowware by the top Mexican silversmiths. And I'd like to bring to your attention at lot number 68032, a work by Antonio Pineda of Tosco, Mexico, dating from about 1970 from a private European collection. This large, elongated, shaped ewer has a spiraling decoration of a serpent with a head at the lip and a talon at the base. Wonderful example of contemporary Mexican silver work. This auction has a particularly fine selection of vertu or works in rock crystal and enamels, most from the Viennese makers. Lot number 68040 by Hermann Ratzersdorfer is an unusual decanter in carved rock crystal in the form of a musician playing pipes made in Vienna about 1872 to 1881 with elaborate silver gilt and enamel mounts as well as a dog perched on the carved base. Another unusual work from the Viennese enamel and rock crystal workshops is lot 68041. This one by Carl Bender and dating to between 1874 and 1892. The boat-shaped raised compote has a cast silver gilt and enamel figure of a mermaid holding up the, the bowl with a pirate at the end of it great mythological enamel work on it. These pieces are the height of historicist style work produced in Vienna and renowned through the different exhibitions in London, in Vienna, and Paris for their quality of enameling as well as the work in cut crystal. One of the top workers in Vienna during the period 1875 to 1890 was Hermann Baum, whose work is well documented but often unsigned. This towering clock with five different faces with enamel at multiple levels interspersed with gilt, silver, and enamel banding was made actually to fool people. Most of the pieces, it's have been hypothesized, are not marked because they were being marketed to as original 16th and 17th century wares though now standing about 150 years later, we do realize the 19th century historicist hand at work. This unusual piece with full dimension and incredible enamel work is probably one of the finest pieces of this genre to be offered at auction in recent history. From the renowned workshops of Karl Fabergé in St. Petersburg, Russia, we are proud to offer this unusual lyre-shaped pin with, set with diamonds and rubies in three-colored gold. This was made in the workshops of Fyodor Afanasyev and is fully marked for the period 1908 to 1917. Fabergé's workshops are well known for the quality of their work, but it's also somewhat of a misnomer to always label them as the work of Carl Fabergé, since each of the workmasters carried out work within independent workshops, and then they were sold through the auspices of Fabergé. This particular piece bears the original scratched inventory marks for Fabergé, which helps document it within the workbooks still extant. For the first time, we will be offering a large selection of works in Chinese export silver from various makers from Canton, Peking, as well as Shanghai. Epitomizing the quality of the work is lot 68077, a large bowl from the workshop of KC, an unknown maker in Canton with incredibly cast and detailed dragon supports in the hemispherical bowl. An unusual and historically important offering is lot 68103, a colonial Indian silver 
piece of Judaica, in this instance a Haggadah cover, by an unknown maker from Bombay and dated to 1861. This particular piece is inscribed as being given to Rabbi Judah Khan by the Jews of Bombay, an actually very prosperous community that were at that time celebrating the completion of the new synagogue in Bombay. This piece is has typical work of the Bombay um, silver workshops with great detailing of foliate and beaded bands with cavorting animals and hunters. From a private Dallas collection, we are offering lot 68120, an unusual silver centerpiece by the firm of Arnes Gerard of London, dating between 1851 and 1852, designed by the head of their design workshops, Edmund Cotterell, a French designer who was brought over specifically by Gerards to design these wonderful full figural works. In this instance, a piece that is evocative of the Orientalist traditions popular in the 1851s with a rider on horseback with a turban while at his feet a rug trader is seated on a carpet leaning against his camel. In 1851, um, Cotterell actually was awarded a, a prize by the London Goldsmiths and Silversmiths Institute for his designs in the Moore style after this piece. And only two or three known extant examples have come down to us of this theme, one of them currently in the El Tajir collection in the Emirates. Our cover lot for this auction, lot number 68132, is an unusual high relief tray, probably made in Germany around 1864 to 1893 and bearing French import marks. This piece in high relief is a wonderful sacrificial scene drawn from mythology, probably a sacrifice to the goddess Vesta within shaped borders adorned with putti and garlands um, and coats of arms. An incredibly large piece with measuring almost a yard in width. From the workshops of Mario Buccellati, a name synonymous with quality and design and silver production, are two important lots. The first one, 68155, a full-size naturalistically modeled macaw on tree trunk from his 1950s era endangered species series. This piece is realistically modeled with hair-like detailing as well as feathers. Um, incredible, extraordinary work um, which needs to be experienced in person to fully appreciate. Another important work from the Buccellati workshops is lot 68156, a large center bowl raised on scrolling feet. This piece measures 23 and a half inches in length and is actually currently still offered by Buccellati, but beware, there's a four-year waiting list. You can have this now. From our offerings of important American silver is lot 68246, an unusual vase by Tiffany and Company dating to about 1879. This piece with very unusual acid etched decoration and naturalistic irises. Only a handful of pieces in this technique are known and many of them are illustrated in the major works on American silver, um, particularly one by Richard Osterberg, Silver Hollowware for Dining Elegance. Another lot from the Tiffany and Company Silver Works is 68250, a lap over edge pattern bowl with hand hammer decoration featuring cavorting fish on this hand hammer ground on the inside realistically detailed seagrass picked out in gilt. These pieces um, are probably the finest expressions of naturalism in silver produced during the 1880s. From the Whiting Manufacturing Company of New York, New York, Lot number 68255 is an unusual silver and silver gilt highlighted mixed metal pitcher with a crab along a hand hammered base featuring shells and seaweed, an expression of naturalism found in silver in America from the 1880s. Mixed metal work is probably one of the finest expressions of this type of design adding an element of whimsy as well as 
virtuosity in production of silver. Rounding out our auction is lot number 68284, one of three works by the Gore Manufacturing Company from their Martellet line. Introduced at the end of the 19th century, Martellet was a higher standard of silver, 9584 versus 925, and it's an expression of Art Nouveau at its fullest height. This particular work, it was documented in the Gorm archives as having begun in October 31st, 1907. 50 hours were spent in the making of this bull, and another 132 and a half hours were required for the naturalistic chasing done by the top designer in the Martellet workshops, David Wilmot. Originally, the cost for this piece was $260. At that period, a small fortune for a work in silver. I want to invite you to browse through our website at www.ha.com for the full auction catalog, including descriptions and condition reports for our November 8th auction. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to give us a call.